You've probably noticed something weird in the economy right now. They say we're living through an AI revolution, the beginning of a golden age. Markets are surging, and Nvidia is worth more than several G7 economies. Not to mention that the US claims it's leading the most important technological race in human history. But underneath all of that optimism, something feels off. AI companies are losing money faster than they can raise it. The cost of running these models is exploding, and America's advantage, the one it said would last a generation, is shrinking month by month. In January, a quiet shock hit the system. China's latest AI breakthrough has leapfrogged the world. I think we should take the development out of China very, very seriously. DeepSeek says took it just two months and less than $6 million. They have the best open source model and all the American developers are building on that. Open source LLM model DeepSeek R1 from China started matching American capabilities at a fraction of the cost, sometimes 10, 20, even 50 times cheaper. The world once thought that Chinese chip makers were years behind, but it turns out the lead didn't last very long. US analysts once believed that they had a two to three year lead on China in the AI race. They're now slowly coming to the realization that China has quickly closed the gap to six months or less. China's well ahead of us on energy. We're way ahead on chips. Uh, they're right there on infrastructure. They're right there on AI models. And now the US is realizing that it's the most valuable industry is caught with its pants down. Most people think the AI race is about innovation. They think the ones who build the best models, who hires the best engineers, who trains the biggest systems will win the race. But that's not what this war is about. This is a story about costs. It's a story about margins. It's a story about strategy. It's a story about a country that understands something that the West still hasn't grasped yet. Blinded by their relentless pursuit of profit. The winner of the AI race won't be the country that builds the most expensive technology. It will be the country that makes intelligence cheaper for the world to access. This is how China plans to win the AI war, not by out innovating America, but by collapsing the price of AI as close to zero as possible. Because they know that margins are America's weak spot, and we could only assume that they're doing this in hopes of taking the US economy down with it. To understand how we got here, you have to understand the illusion that American big tech has cast on the world. The United States built the most expensive AI ecosystem in the world. An ecosystem that's powered by capital, by markets, and by speculation. The hope is that artificial intelligence will transform everything. This includes healthcare, national security, productivity, even in our daily lives. That hope has created a multi-trillion dollar asset bubble. Nvidia now commands a market value roughly equal to 16% of US GDP. OpenAI is valued like a sovereign nation despite burning cash at a rate that would bankrupt most Fortune 500 companies. And the tech giants, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they're pouring in tens of billions into data centers, GPUs, and cloud infrastructure. On the surface, the numbers look strong. The Dow Jones is rising, markets are optimistic, and investors feel invincible. But peel back the layers and the story changes. What looks like innovation on its surface is something far different from that. A financial merry-go-round. OpenAI pays Oracle for compute, Oracle buys Nvidia chips, Nvidia then invests money back into AI startups, and those startups pay for more computing power. Money circulates, balance sheets expand, and everyone claims growth even though the value and revenue isn't actually being created. It's all essentially IOUs. Right now, America's AI boom is driven more by anticipation than adoption, and that's what makes it vulnerable. If you strip away the hype, the core numbers tell a different story. In the first half of 2025, through Microsoft's quarterly reports, the market found out that OpenAI generated $4.3 billion in revenue. But also through those same projections, made by extrapolating Microsoft's ownership stake, it's projected that OpenAI posted a net loss between $7.8 billion and $13.5 billion. They're on track to lose $27 billion by the end of the year. For every dollar OpenAI brings in, it appears to be spending several more. They spend about 50% of their revenue on computing costs alone. Now we have to do a lot to figure out how to make data centers more efficient, to think about new ways to power them. But in terms of AI, it is voracious right now for GPUs and for compute. 
the biggest thing we face is being right. constantly under compute. Um, that's why we launched Stargate. That's why we're doing the bigger builds, as you right. see, with Microsoft, but with Oracle, CoreWeave, and so on. And 75% of its revenue on training computations. This is as of a September 2025 report. The entire US AI ecosystem depends on high GPU prices, massive data centers, and investor confidence. And all three are showing cracks. A Harvard economist warned that US GDP growth in 2025 was just about 0.1% if you exclude all of the AI data center related growth. Without uh, data centers, uh, GDP growth was 0.1% in the first half of 2025. That's according to your calculations. Let's talk about that. In the mechanical calculation, you can just add up what went into GDP or into demand in the first half of the year, and 92% of the increase in it came from just two categories of GDP, information processing systems and software, which is to say the stuff going into um, data centers. So absent that, we would have had basically no GDP growth. Now, when we talk about a counterfactual imaginary world where we hadn't done this big data center expansion, then um, that it would be a little bit different from that. Um, in two respects, it wouldn't be quite as bad as what I just said, because we would have had less imports. A lot of those chips are imported. We also would have had probably lower interest rates and so more real estate investment. So that would have made up for some of the data center growth if we hadn't gotten the data center growth. Consumer confidence fell to levels that are usually seen at the start of recessions. Yet, stock evaluations climbed. Then another warning arrived. A report from MIT found that only 5% of American companies had implemented AI in a way that actually improved their bottom line. 95% said the same thing, which is that the technology just wasn't ready for production yet. It was too slow, too expensive, and too unreliable. And the US Federal Reserve, they see this too. They won't admit it publicly, but you can read between the lines. Markets expected rate cuts, but the Fed refused and even hinted at the fact that this won't be a guarantee going forward because adding more liquidity now would inflate an already dangerous asset cycle. Everybody understands the risk. AI is holding up the market, and if AI breaks, everything else breaks too. This is a contradiction at the center of the American economy. The AI boom is both a source of optimism and the reason that workers feel insecure. But the real danger to the bubble bursting isn't inside the country, it's outside of it. Because while America built an AI market, China built an AI strategy. This is the part that most people don't understand. America's AI strategy is built on margins, on making intelligence expensive, whether it's chips, models, or cloud services. China looked at that model and designed the exact opposite. Its strategy is simple, but it's devastating for the US if it succeeds. Make AI so cheap that the US can't profit from it. Collapse the margins, collapse the bubble, and ultimately collapse America's entire advantage. How? By open sourcing everything. DeepSeek, Quen, Yi, Intern LM. These are all large language models that either match or beat Western performance at a lower cost. It's not locked behind a paywall and it's available to anyone in the world. They're open sourcing the whole AI ecosystem. Then to add to this, China backed more than 20 domestic chip firms. Some are already producing inference chips that cost a fraction of Nvidia's hardware. And while the US power grid remains stagnant, China built the world's most advanced energy infrastructure that provides cheap electricity for the most electricity hungry industry ever created. AI uses computation. Computation requires energy and energy is policy. And so far, China seems to understand this. America does not. So how far ahead of China do you think we are in terms of AI development at this point? How Depending on which layer of the stack, but overall, I would say we're not far ahead. Um, if you look at the entire stack, they're way ahead on energy. The U.S. is building the most expensive intelligence in history, and China is making intelligence close to being free. And in commodified markets, the cheaper model always wins, especially when the expensive model depends on margins that can't survive competition. Once AI becomes a commodity, U.S. companies lose their business model. Oracle-owned data centers lose their profitability. NVIDIA GPUs lose their premium, and OpenAI loses the ability to justify its burn rate. 
America built AI as a luxury product, high margins, high capital costs, premium pricing, and China is turning AI into a public utility, cheap, open, and accessible. This is not a race to the top, it's a race to the bottom. They built a power grid that's expanding faster than anything in the West, and that matters in an industry defined by electricity. But more importantly, they didn't expect China to attack the economics of AI rather than the capabilities. There's a famous quote from the Art of War that says, all warfare is based on deception. Hence, when we're able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must appear inactive. When we're near, we must make the enemy believe that we are far away. And when we're far away, we must make him believe that we are near. That's where the real battlefield is. China forced the US to defend the wrong terrain, exhausting resources on presumed threats while the real blow lands somewhere else. It's a strategic pump fake that redefines victory without firing a single shot. Jensen Wang, the CEO of Nvidia, put it bluntly, AI is power. The country with the cheapest, most reliable electricity will dominate the AI landscape, not because of the talent, not because of capital, but because training and running models is an energy war. So where does this leave America? Well, there's three paths ahead. Path one, the bubble pops, the Nasdaq falls at least 20%, data center construction slows down, open AI faces insolvency without a government bailout, and the US enters a recession. Path two, the system adapts, America shifts from speculation to application, focuses on hard tech, industrial automation, robotics, infrastructure, and builds cheaper energy, and stops relying on the margin-based intelligence. It's possible, but it requires a national strategy the US has not shown yet. Path three, the US doubles down on the old model, more GPUs, more hype, more circular money deals, more rate cuts, more risk. This is the third path, the one that the market expects, and it's the most dangerous path of them all. Because bubbles don't burst slowly, they burst all at once. AI is propping up a significant share of market confidence at the moment. If that belief cracks, a lot of other pieces will fall with it. But once again, it's been your boy A. Cole. Hopefully you get it, you got it, you're good, you learned something, and I'll talk to you in the next one.